Okay, I'm just going to mention a few things um, about my uh, Asian trip. I went to China first, the south uh, western area uh, near Laos and uh, Thailand. Um, they've slashed, uh, they've uh, clear cut everything. So all of those remote areas have all been clear cut and they're planting uh, rubber trees everywhere. Um, the food is still incredible there though. The tribes are still, I mean they don't all dress in their garb like they do in Thailand. They're not in their native garb. But their food, they have all heirloom food so it tastes so delicious. Heirloom corn, everything they have is heirloom. So it's none of this hybrid stuff. Um, in Laos, I was very disappointed with Laos uh, because they advertise it as a green country and it's supposed to be very primitive. And uh, I went to um, um, Vien Tien, uh, Luang Prabang, uh, Odom Sai, and um, Luang Nam Tha. And two of those, uh, Odom Sai and Luang Nam Tha, are supposed to be green states. Um, they're about the size of probably uh, Arizona, each state. And uh, when I went, well, I, there was no airport, so I had to take buses. And when I was going through uh, both the Odom Sai, uh, but ma mainly Luang Nam Tha, 85, now this is the one, if you go online and you go anywhere, they advertise that as the echo state of Laos. And it's 85% clear cut. And only rubber trees planted. Ecologically imbalanced. And they say they're preserving all the Indian tribes. They have the highest number of Indian tribes, like 60 Indian tribes in that state. And they can't even function. And along the roadsides on the buses, they have the dirtiest fuel I've ever experienced in the world. It is so dirty that it tarnished all the vegetation for 200 yards on either side of the roadway. Okay. And we're talking about a mountainous region. And it's that, that it just yellowed it all the way 200 yards out. I'm talking two football fields away. Most of your Indian tribes live on the roadways. So they're being poisoned to death. Same thing the American government did to, to, to the um, uh, American Indian, just wiping them out. And they advertise as ecologically preserving the natives' natural way and everything. It's disgusting. And uh, <clears throat> one time I took a hike. I hired um, a driver and a um, and a guide and a translator. Uh, to go way back into the highest out of the way hill tribes only 10 miles away from China and to get up there they're dressed like I am in jeans and you know not in their native garb at all and I walk up there and there all these little boys from about the age of 6 to about the age of 11 are saying to me uh, boom boom for food boom boom for food it means they want to have sex for food. They're not preserving these Indians at all, you know. And they sold all the little girls. So there were only two girls in that whole tribe, all the little boys. They were being sold for sex. So it was uh, shocking. It was, uh, uh, it was uh, disgusting, and it was in all of this stuff you read in the propaganda. You know, it was, uh, I, you know, I just don't know how these people can do that, but they do it. They have no conscience. The government people, you know, they're into it for the clear cutting now for the, you know, all the rubber tree stuff that they can sell to China and to other countries. You know, so they don't care about the natives at all. And even though you hear stuff about it, so just wanted to let you know that's going on. Um, they clear, they 
clear, they um, slash and burn everything so they don't mulch. They're into that. The farmers, they can't make any money anymore because the American system has gone in and lowered the prices. You know, big companies buy all of the grain, the rice, from the small farmers and then don't give them a, a, a very much money. And then they make all the big money, the, mi the middleman, the salesperson. So it puts the little farmer out. So the little farmer, instead of having two growing seasons, they have three growing seasons just to make ends meet. So instead of cutting uh, the remainder of the, the rice, uh, uh, the rice stalks, they will cut them and burn them rather than mulching them in. Because if they have to wait for them to mulch in, then it's, uh, they lose all growing season. And then every field is slash and burn. I mean, it's like the sky is, gr is gray and brown every day. I had a lung infection the entire time that I was there to try to keep it out. On the roadway, when I was on the bus, buses, I realized how bad it was because I was spitting up green and yellow phlegm within a few hours on the bus. So when we made the next stop and there happened to be a pharmacy uh, in this particular town, um, it was pretty, pretty primitive in Laos, uh, in Luang Nam Tha. So to find a, a pharmacy outside of a big town is impossible. But uh, so their big towns are like 2,000 people. Those are big cities, huge cities. So I got a surgeon cotton mask and I wore that. Two hours in the bus, I got to the other end of the black. Wow. That is how bad the fuel is. They mean to kill these people and use up all the resources. So, pretty bad. So. While I was there, I also learned this time, I was, even though I didn't have milk, I was going to find a different way to see if I could adjust to no water. So I would, any time now when I eat or drink, instead of guzzling, I put my lips together and act like an infant who hasn't learned to suckle yet. So I force just a little bit of fluid into my mouth at a time, maybe a tablespoon with a sucker, you know, maybe half a tablespoon. And with that action, I don't get thirsty. And I used to guzzle my milk and guzzle my milk and I'd have to drink. And when I was in Thailand, not able to get much milk, uh, at least frequently, um, I would you know, resort to drinking, you know, like two cups of water a day. And here, you know, I don't drink water, you know, because I have the milk. But I found that I drink less milk. I, I'm very, you know, cut, but still hold all my fat. And I'm not thirsty and I'm not dry mouth. Just by controlling, even guzzling milk or any other fluid of my vegetable juice, I drink everything slowly now. So I can stay trimmer. I don't have to carry as much fluid weight. Okay, question. Answer. Start with you. Questions and answers, then? Questions and answers, yeah. Uh, uh, Pat, can I come, can you come back to me? Uh -huh. Meningitis. Yes. When yes. I started with you five years ago, I was super stiff. And I've gone through parts where my joints start to break with the toxic scar tissue. And um, I had the meningitis, which I have a feeling the fire brought back out again with me. Um, most people in the diet don't know that the meningitis is not something you actually want to get rid of. It's actually good. It helps clear up the heavy metals, uh, probably from vaccination and stuff. Lisa, on the way in, was telling me how sick she was. She was going through all sorts of tremors, which is like what I had. Uh, any comment on what other things could help when you're going through such a heavy detox, for instance, like spinal meningitis, whether it's viral or bacteria? Well, when um, when you have uh, meningitis, it's a detoxification of the spinal cord or the brain. If it's spinal meningitis, of course, it's the spine. If it's cerebral meningitis, it's of the brain. Uh, because of the brain, um, 
utilizes most uh, of the metallic minerals in the body to uh, convey light and electricity and conduct electricity, the concentration of metallic minerals in the brain and nervous system is extraordinary. So when you go through a detox of the brain and spinal cord, it is usually debilitating to the point where most people don't get out of bed. I've had spinal meningitis four times since I had that radiation therapy that cauterized my spine. So when I went through meningitis, I was in so much pain, I couldn't lift the legs. I had to be cared for. And plus, the mind goes everywhere, and it just, it's not consistent, it's pretty crazy. And there's violent spells, there's all kinds of things that goes on. Uh, because everything's misfiring. Uh, the synapse, the ganglion, the axions are all misfiring. And uh, memory retention's bad. Uh, I've only known uh, two people who've been active on their feet, and that's Lisa and Scott. You know, during meningitis, I've never known any other people to not be completely incapacitated with meningitis. We go through some really wacky things mentally. Yeah, well, you know, when you've got that much metal going on. And uh, aluminum's a great part of that toxicity. And aluminum destroys the zeta potential. And the zeta potential is the ability for nutrients to remain suspended in fluid. So it's like if you took liquid mercury and poured it into a fish tank, the fish would hit bottom. They could no longer stay suspended in the water. They can't swim. So the same thing happens in our brain and nervous system. All of a sudden, everything hits bottom in the brain, so it doesn't function properly. And uh, you have to expect that if you go through that kind of a detoxification, and you might warn the people around you. <laughs> you know, especially you've got loved ones you're not going to be rational you're not going to be coherent and you're not going to be nice all the time you know, so. uh, as far as what to do about it it depends upon the individual how they're handling the detoxification uh, most people I tell you know, do very little save your energy and your nutrients for the detoxification because if you use an activity then there could be, you know, scarring in the brain or nervous system. So you have less functionality. It's best also not to tax the body in digestion. You might not want to have whole milkshakes. Uh, just milk and eggs separately, honey separately. Um, take everything separately, even though it's not as tasty as and enjoyable. Also, you'll be dumping so many heavy me metals uh, and free radicals. Most people label heavy metals free radicals. A free radical is an agent that doesn't have its proper bond to make it a beneficial substance. So, like, you could have potassium, calcium, um, uh, phosphorus, and magnesium as your main bonds to any kind of heavy metal that has a purpose in the body to conduct electricity or transfer light, and there's a small amount of that within those bonds. When you cook food, you fractionate that, and you never know how those ions are going to group together, and they always mismatch in, in uh, poor, poor relationships and poor quantities and concentrations. So that's why a lot of people who are on poor diets are not as rational as logical. And uh, I can prove how logical and sensible people are on this diet. If I look at the children who are on this diet, um, I just had one 19 years old graduate from Yale. He was on the diet since he was one year old, and he only does 70% of the diet. And then one five-year-old who's... Uh, 99.9% .9 on the diet. He has, gets a cake. And, uh, used to at preschool, but he just entered the fourth grade and he's five years old. So, all the children, <laughs> all the children on this diet are exceptional. 
because everything is in proper balance. The brain and nervous system work properly. Um, so when you go through a, a detoxification of your spine and, and uh, brain, you're not going to be functioning properly. You're going to be functioning the least balanced. Don't expect to be rational. Don't beat yourself up. Just try to isolate yourself so you don't hurt anybody. You know, emotionally and you know. Uh, well, one woman I convinced her she was very, very skinny and uh, about 46 years old. Always claimed she was 38. You know the. <laughs> What actor was that? Uh, Jack Benny or what? Always says he was 36. 39. Always says he was 39. She was like that thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so she was very, very skinny and she was so afraid. And MD, she's, you know, in show business. She's a writer, director, and composer. Um, and her husband is also a very famous. Uh, her ex-husband was a famous casting director, so very connected. So, I mean, when the, when do you know an MD ever does a house call? So she got a house call from a very famous MD, and he said, you've got at least pneumonia and uh, probably meningitis, and you're going to die if you don't get to the hospital within 24 hours. So, she, you know, this is after 10 days of going through this already. And everybody's just freaking out around her. So uh, she called me, and I calmed her down. It took about 45 minutes because they really scared her. So the MD did, and her friends. So and her ex-husband and her son, 15-year-old son at the time. So I convinced her to have two to three moisturizing lubrication formulas a day. Uh, plus lots of fish and chicken. So she gained about 70 to 80 pounds. I don't remember what it was. She went up six dress sizes, clothing sizes. So, and I mean, I had been trying to get her to get fat for, you know, a few years. So here was my chance, and I took it. So, but... You know, because I didn't know how long she was going to go through this, because this kind of spinal meningitis and cerebral meningitis, that can go on for up to a year, sometimes a year and a few months, depending upon how toxic somebody is, how much heavy metals they have in their brain and nervous system. So I wanted her to get it to it as quickly as possible. So, I mean, when she finished, she was literally, she was very skinny, and when she finished, she was this big, looked like a Jewish pear, you know. So I really looked like it, but she just cried and cried, you know. <laughs> Once she got better, and just looked at her body, cried and cried. How am I going to ever take this off? Am I ever going to take this off? Am I going to look like this the rest of my life? It took a year to remove it, only a year, well, a year and a few months to remove it. That's all it took. But she got to the men of spinal meningitis and meningitis in about three months. She wasn't restricted to a bed after about six, seven weeks. You know, other people, you know, they'll go a very long time if they don't get real fat and have the fat to be able to dump that stuff quicker. You can't eat enough fat. You can't. The blood fat will not protect you very much when that stuff is coming into the tissues and the body doesn't want to dump it into the blood because it's going to do some damage to your bloodstream. So you have to have exterior fat. Again, I, you know, I say, Ajans, you're skinny. I am not skinny. I just have these very small fat molecules. When you, I've been built on raw fat molecules since February of 72. I started eating raw foods before that, but I committed to all raw foods in February of 72. So all the fat molecules are very small in my body. When you cook a fat, they're 10 to 50 times, sometimes even larger. Take, um, what do they call that, fat back? You take pig fat, 
and you boil it in oil, and all of a sudden stuff comes up crispy, crispy and big, and it starts off as a little bitty fat molecule. It swells up like that. It swells with air and fluid, depending on on what you cook it. That will be. Let's say you cooked it in water, it would be smaller. Cook it in oil, it's going to get huge. So. Fat doesn't have to be huge. Most of the women who are on the diet, by the time they're 12 years on the diet, they're always slender even though they're fat. Men, it's usually eight years for the average person, but they're about 20%. It may take 12 to 15 years. If you if any woman's had cesarean, then of course it goes much longer, it takes longer. And if you've had over two children, it's just like cesarean and it'll take longer to uh, to get your slim fat and to maintain that. Cellulite takes uh, about that same amount of time to dissolve, but if you pretty much stay on the diet, you'll never have cellulite again. Cellulite is toxic hardened fat that's combined with some kind of toxin in your body and it's dried out. Animal fat will never dry out in at human body temperature. That's always vegetable oil like margarine, stuff like that. That crystallizes in the human body and hardens in the human body. So that's when you see those little round bubbles and bumps all through your skin underneath there. That's the kind of cellulite that does not come from animal fat. It's hardened fat, and it's hard to dissolve. You have to get into the lymphatic baths to dissolve that, two a week. And uh, I've learned since I wrote the book um, that having a lot of people do it now, about 20% of the people, um, when they're taking the lymphatic baths, on everybody, what happens is it causes the lymphatic toxicity to melt and discharge its toxicity into the connective tissue to be perspired out of the body. So, in the book I said, make sure it's every three days, every three to four days, so you have time to dump. Some people do not dump it out of their connective tissue, so that will lead to um, MS or lupus. So I'm saying now take a 35 to 40 minute bath a day on the days where you're not doing the hour to an hour and a half lymphatic bath to make sure you get it out of the connective tissue. Can you say that again? 30 to 35 minute bath daily. Yeah, that's what you made me do when I got so sick after yep. the fire. Can I was doing that every day. Can yep. you describe the bath a little more? Pardon? The well, I described them in the book. Okay. So look under lymphatic baths, and we want to live. Can I tell you how to do them? Yeah, what I say in there is to put milk, uh, you know, vinegar, and some sea salt, and clay if you want in the bath. Same difference. Yeah. Pardon? Yeah, well, you've got those stuff to put in there. It's going to handle that fluoride. Why did you think that? Now, you've got enough milk fat, and, you know, the sea salt will dissolve those, uh, you know, will bind with those uh, fluoride. And the milk, uh, you know, calcium and magnesium and phosphorus and sulfur will bind with it, too. So it won't be absorbed into your skin. Molecules will be a bit too large. Yes. The long bath is the lymphatic bath. That's an hour to an hour and a half. And then you're That's for people who are not discharging it from their skin through their skin. Well, I can tell. If you start swelling, your skin starts filling up with more and more water, and you're getting puffy in the next few days. Yeah, or you have lesions coming out of your body. Yep. I have all sorts of red things coming out all over my body since the fire. 
because if I put my gas, it's actually warm sometimes. I'll come out and my eye makes me start getting really swollen. Yeah. Well, that could be just discharging it. If you don't, if that swelling doesn't dissipate by the time you're taking the next time to take the long, hot bath, then you're not discharging it quickly enough out of your skin, out of your connective tissue. Okay. And you need those shorter baths. And when you shorter ones, you still have to put everything in the water. You still have to, you still have to put everything in the water, or you have good filters. You have a three-filter tier system in your apartment or in your house. So you don't have to use so much good ingredients. You know, if you have those filters there, you use a half a cup of milk, you know, and a couple of tablespoons of sea salt, and a couple of tablespoons of vinegar rather than a, a whole cup to a cup and a half. And you're still doing the pineapple drink? No. no. That's only for the long bath. And what if you use the jacuzzi and you have it at 104? Would that? Uh, 104 is great. Yeah. So you can do that for the long yeah. bath? Yes. Well, well it should be, high, if you keep it at 102, that's as high as it has to go. Really? Okay. Yeah. There was a, a misprint. I don't know how it got. It said 110 in the first right of the <laughs> of We Want to Live. I said 110. <laughs> people are cooking, you know. So you got to cook the enzymes out of your skin. So I don't know how that jacuzzi? happened. What would you put in the jacuzzi? <clears throat> Put vinegar, salt. Yeah. You want to put the milk because that's going to clog up the no. filter. No, it won't clog. I use coconut cream in mine. It doesn't clog up your filter? No. no I use, I have a sand filter. Oh, well. But a regular filter. And what about uh, the fluoride? Because there's supposedly by 2010, all water, all systems are supposed to be fluoridated. Well, the U.S. Any government other? military has to get rid of their fluoride waste. And they want to poison and weaken the people, get them all slaves. Yeah. It has to be that cynical. Camp. Yeah. Okay, do you have a question? I do. Okay. Do you have a question? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got one thing about these fires. I mean, boy, that's really just kind of stating. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm sure you're getting a lot of phone calls about it. Is the remedy the same for everybody, or are you dispensing different things for different people? I mean, all well, of us affected, and everybody's denying, oh, I got a cold, or this and that, but it's the fire. Well, the fires are causing the detoxification, the asthma, the allergies, the colds, the flus. If it were just, you know, these carbon structures that were burning, it wouldn't be so bad because your body can take that down, you know, with a few colds. But because of all the building materials that have plastic and asbestos and all those toxic substances were in the in the uh, the fumes in the smoke, you know, everybody was poisoned, majorly poisoned, including the livestock. And Everything so was poisoned. Not by local. Everything was poisoned. Everybody got poisoned. Yeah, well, the animals detox and stuff, but well, yeah, it's going to take them a while. They'll detox. It will take them a long time. Yeah, but we can't eat the meat. We should not be eating the meat. Right? Well, you have to understand that's going to get it. If you're eating the glands and organs, you're going to have trouble. No, just a, just a the meat, the meat, it builds slowly. So it's okay to buy your meat. Yeah. The muscle meat. Yeah. To build slowly. And the body's good. The animal's body's going to throw as much as it can into the brain, nervous system, you know, any place where there's fat. Don't eat the bone marrow. Don't eat the brain. Don't eat the nervous system. Don't eat the fatty glands. No, I just buy the truck. Okay. Okay, do you have questions? They don't, but it's pretty good. Um, they eat a lot of raw beef and they eat a lot of raw fish. In fact, it's raw 
fish and beef is about on the average, and the people that they're, you know, it's, it's the people who have the money to pay for that. The the lackeys, the the people who don't have a mu the, much money, don't eat that kind of raw stuff as frequently. So they're not judging it from the whole, all of Japan, all of Japan's people, just those people who go to doctors. But so they they're only the judging rate. that. They have the highest selling cancer rate in the world. Right? Yeah, but that's because Fuji and Kodak used to jump right into their waterways. In the 60s, uh, you could you could take a um, undeveloped roll of film and stick it right into the bay, and it would develop. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. They were dumping right in. Mm -hmm. So it poisoned everybody's stomach. You know. uh, yep. Of course, they cleaned it up since then. But all through the 60s, it was that way. You know, 40s and 50s and 60s. It wasn't until 72 where they started cleaning it. No, it's very, you know, I mean, if you're if you're pampering, you know, if you're making a, a little princess of your cow, you know, if you're, it doesn't have any exercise and you massage it all day long. Does everybody know what Kobe beef is? Kobe beef is an animal, a cow, that's held into a stall. Uh, it's got heat, air conditioning. And it's massaged almost 24 hours a day. It is very pampered. It's like, you know, $125 a pound. So it's very, very tender because it never gets any exercise but standing. It stands while it's getting massaged. It's hand-fed. It's mostly fed grain, you know, so it's very fatty. And it's extremely tender, but it's not strong, healthy meat. It sure tastes good. You know, it's easy to chew. It melts in your mouth. But, uh, it's not healthy, healthy meat. It's a wild meat. Yeah. Oh, that was another thing. I don't eat much pork because it just isn't that, uh, that appetizing to me. But when I got to China and Laos, they don't raise our domesticated pig. They raise wild boars. And I mean, oh, I couldn't stop eating it. That's all I ate. For, for like a month, that's all I ate. And I would get big strips. The, the, the fat is incredible. The, the strips like this, and they had a hard layer of fat that I couldn't eat. It would take a, a dog or a cat to eat it. And then it had a chewier fat, not real tender, but really delicious. I'd eat two of those in one sitting with a handful of the meat. Two, three times a day was so delicious. <laughs> oh, great. Do you have a question, Joe? Okay, do you have, uh, Lorraine? Uh, no, I usually buy one there because it's so much. You know, if I'm going to stay in one hotel for a while, but when I'm traveling, I just use my teeth. Well, it's so warm there, I can put it all together and then shake it, you know, because it's like 80 degrees, average 82 degrees, so everything melts there, so it's easy. No, I'll chew and expectorate. But there's a lot of places that make juice now, and mainly um, over there, mainly I'll eat um, sugarcane juice, which is a vegetable. No, straight, fresh. I'll watch them juice it right there. They have these huge drums that crush. You, know, you run the big sugarcane stalks through there and it crushes them. And, uh, and they do different things in different places. In, in um, Cambodia, they always put a lime and have a lime squeezed through with it. Because um, sugarcane juice is bitter, and it's not real sweet. 
the sugar is in the cellulose and you have to boil the sugar cane to get the sugar out of it. So the sugar cane juice is like celery and cucumber. When you, you know. chew it, the sugar cane is sweet. You know, and you go get it from the field and chew Yeah, it. but when you juice it, when you when the sugar is in the cellulose, so unless you're chewing the cellulose or you boil it, the sugar's not released. Well, the first time I thought, oh, God, I'm going to have to see, you know, what it, what it does to me. So the first time I had two ounces, no reaction, no sugar reaction. Next time I had four ounces the next day, no sugar reaction. Next day I had eight ounces, no sugar reaction. Next time I had 12 ounces, that's as high as I'll drink at one time, and uh, within a 20-minute period, and uh, no reaction. Uh, yes, if, yeah, I do that. Florida, they juice it. Pardon? In Florida, parts of Florida, they juice it. They put the whole yeah. stuff. It comes out sweet, though. Yeah, India as well. Okay. Well, it depends on what sugar cane they're using. Okay. Yeah. So is, like, it looks like dirty dishwater. Yes. But it's delicious. Yeah, dirty Very dish mild, water. not real sweet, but it just has a little... Yeah. Well, that sweetness is not, when it's that kind of sweetness, it's a collection of minerals. Yeah. All of your alkalinizing minerals taste sweet. Yeah. It's it isn't like sugar. Do you have a question? Yes. Um, I recently traveled in India and been away from the system, got really relaxed and fast, and now I kind of want to speak in that place. Good luck. <laughs> well, anything that uh, you know that keeps the body balanced, and uh, the diets that I put on page forty and forty-one of the recipe book, if you follow the eating schedules in there, they will always give you the most serenity, clarity and energy at the same time. You always be balanced. People who will take the time to eat that those two routines, depending upon what their uh, particular body type is, um, body type I mean if you're diabetic or have a sugar problem, you want to eat three meat meals a day. If you're, if you're just average or normal sugar uh, reactor, then uh, just two meat meals a day. If you'll eat that plan where you have a juice, meat meal, milkshake, or some kind of dairy product with some cream in it, and then, um, you know, it could be kefir, it could be yogurt with some extra cream in it uh, to relax the system. Then juice again, then your fruit meal for detoxification with some kind of fat. Then a juice again, then your meat meal. If you're sugar type, then you have... Um, after the second juice, you'd have another small meat meal, and then your fruit meal, and then the juice again, and then your meat, um, and then, uh, you know, some milk before you go to bed, warm milk and honey and cream, and during the night the same. If you do that, you'll always stay very balanced. When you start doing your own thing, you won't be balanced. You just won't be balanced. You're right, I was balanced. Back. Yeah, and it works. Yeah. And then when you start going off, everything else goes off out of balance. Because, I mean, it, it took me a lot of years of observing and focusing and experimenting to get a diet that can keep somebody clear and bright and uh, focused and energetic all day long. The whole time of their life. I have, when I do it, and I do it all the time. Even when I'm in Thailand, I don't get the dairy like I'd like to every year. But I still focus the meat. I'll eat three meat meals, uh, usually a day there. Um, but I'll eat very small amounts instead of a larger meat meal like I have here. I'll have two larger meat meals here, like a half a pound at a time, 
when I'm there it may be you know a third of a pound or even quarter of a pound at a time so I eat it more often but I keep rigid like that I'm down to about three and a half hours a day sleeping and clear and working the rest of the time So, and sometimes I'll take a 10 minute, 20 minute nap in the day for my other, because I sleep about three hours, three hours and 10 minutes at night, and then take about a 20 minute nap in the day. Sometimes only a 10 minute nap, and I can just go, go, go. No, you need sleep if you're detoxing. Absolutely. Also, if you're in the healing state, you need a lot of sleep. But I've been doing this for. How many years? 28 years. You know, so 28 years on a good diet. I'm not so toxic as I was, even though I had chemotherapy and radiation and all those drugs for so many years when I was a child. I'm not that toxic. I still have 14 years to go to do my 40 year, you know, prison sentence on the body toxicity, but I'm already doing quite well. You know, no, I'm not. There's the Sai tribe, the Sambu, the Eskimo, you know, so. Well, they don't eat, some of them don't eat fruit, but basically, you know, they don't juice, they'll chew some vegetables and spit out the pulp like the gorillas do, and like other carnivores do, but, um, you know, they live to a, a pretty old age, we should be living to about 147 years old. Since I had a vagotomy pyloroplasty, I don't know what that's done to my years. Because it lowers my um, hydrochloric acid production. I don't digest as well as other people do, or as fully as other people do. So I don't know what that's going to do with my potential lifespan. <clears throat> oh, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, it gets some poisons out. Yeah. Do you have a question? Not right now. Okay. Do you have a question? Um, I've gotten a lot better from how I used to eat, and I think I'm still doing a current size for a ball. You look a lot better right? than when I first I'm met you. On, oh, I'm not throwing up every day. Oh, I'm good. Every day. I'm getting a lot better. But I've gotten this formal pattern, and I think it has to do with my activity range and my adrenaline. <coughs> I'll be on a diet. Perfect, no cheating at all, and I can do it for about three weeks. When I hit three weeks, every day I'm more anxious. Remember, last time I came, I said I have problems like this rage, and I just feel bad. Then you have to stop eating red meat. I barely put any in my chicken. Okay. I don't, you only let me have a half a cup at night. So right. I don't even do that every night. Like yeah, just different. eliminate it whenever you go through that. Yeah. Completely eliminate it. And that red meat. Why is that? Uh, red meat incites the adrenal glands and, you know, testosterone production. <laughs> oh, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, that's why I keep telling you, call me. I'm I've had at least five time. years of it. <laughs> There's a lot of fun things to come. <laughs> but, just by, I'm not eating that much. but your husband is the one I'm concerned about because when, you're, when your hormone levels go up, he has to be more helpful. He's out of town. Huh? He's uh, about 20 pounds. How much water do you drink? <clears throat> I go through cycles with that too. Sometimes I'm maybe taking two sips a day. Some days, like if I do a hot bath or something, I might go through one or two to Pellegrino. That's going to throw you so off because then you're not going to digest anything for about a week properly. Because you dilute your hydrochloric acid and dilute all of your digestive juices. I think I'm real dry now, real thirsty <coughs> in my throat, and I'm not going well, to have a snail. Just like I say, you start sipping the way I, the way I said, and it will change. For some reason, it changes. 
The exercise of the mouth, I think, that it has to do like an infant. You know, there's some kind of fluid, there's some kind of fat that pulls down into the mouth. It's the only thing I can think of. I've never been able to keep 20, 23% body fat and look like this. I've always had to have more water, fluid. Now I don't have to retain it anymore once I figured that out. Only took how many years to figure that little piece of information out. But it makes a huge difference. Could you demonstrate? Well, I'll show you. Okay, when I go to <laughs> Stuck, no matter what it's out of, it would probably be a good idea if you got one of those sport bottles that have a nipple on it you can push up and suck yeah. out of, you know. Down. But what I do is I just put my lips together. That was only a teaspoon altogether. Half a teaspoon each time. And then I force it to go through my lips. And it's very difficult to do when I have them pushed together hard. And I'm sucking and pushing my lips together at the same time. It is satisfying. You know, you just see me before I gulp, you know, about a half a cup at a time. Now I take sips at a time. But you don't need it. When you gulp water like that, you urinate a lot of it. Other animals don't urinate much, except the horse. You know, but they live around lakes and rivers, and they drink a lot. But then the horse, some horses won't drink at all. You know, you lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. You know? So... It depends upon the horse, but if you, if a horse is drinking a lot of water, it'll be urinating a lot. But dogs and cats that are not domesticated, you know, like the coyotes, they come up to my house all the time. And I was doing an interview uh, for about vaccines for a, a, a documentary on thir on Friday, and we're sitting in the backyard. And a coyote comes right up, because I feed them, so, I mean, they've never come up that close with other people around before. But, you know, I've got them so tame now. But I watch them piss, and it's like a tablespoon, because they don't have anywhere to drink water, unless they get, hop into my hot tub, you know, to do that, and they don't. Well, I get out of my bath, and I try to use paws like that, and I'm sweating stuff, but I literally... If I don't drink any water, I'm almost like gagging, dry eating stuff, and I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm in bed. I can't. Well, don't drink them. water. Drink the I in the in the um, we want to live book. Look under the hydration drink. Well, I thought the, because the I couldn't see those from the front. Oh, you, you can do those, meal. but you know you just sip a little at a time. Okay. Water is going to make Crohn's worse than the juice oh, yeah. is. You put me on the cucumber drink. Right. And that it helped a lot. Yeah. That's the one in the book? The cucumber book? Uh, well, it's cucumber and, and, uh, and uh, tomatoes in the book. But if you use um, cucumber, you know, if you make a cucumber puree mm -hmm. as uh, the cucumber that's in your juice, the cucumber contains a lot of collagen precursors. So it holds on the water in your tissues better without having to have a lot of water. So, uh, and it helps the skin look better and younger. And that's why my skin is looking so much younger because I started using uh, um, the uh, the cucumber puree rather than cucumber juice. It made a big difference in my skin and the way I hold and retain water. I don't think I'm going to understand the difference between So I don't want to put it through the juice, though? Or Correct. You put it, what you do is you juice the rest of your juice mm -hmm. or tomatoes or if you're having the sport drink, the hydration formula. Right. You slice the cucumbers. You put it into a jar to blend. You put some of the juice in there and then you blend it. So you've got pulp. That's what okay. puree is. Okay. Pulp means you blended something, you haven't juiced it. Okay. So you have the pulp with it. But if you use any other cellulose, it, uh, it will over alkalinize the intestines. For some reason, the cucumber doesn't do that. 
And okay. the tomato doesn't do that? No, tomato doesn't. It's highly acidic. Do you have a question, Craig? Not too small. I think my mom has a question. <laughs> a couple. We were okay. really concerned with the measles outbreak that hit the school because our the, school, what? the measles outbreak. Well, our school is we're going to take my kids out. Well, what about out for three Measles isn't contagious. None of that but stuff is contagious. They were saying that it was a non vaccinated kids that were catching them. They were on live support stuff. They were going to take my son out of school for the three yeah. weeks. Yeah. And so they could move and move on. So what do you tell them? It's fine. Take your kid out of school for three weeks. Mm-hmm. Homeschool for three yeah, weeks. Yeah, they get it. You just, what's in the book? It's all part of detoxification. It's a natural way of cleaning out the body. Mm-hmm. Measles awesome. cleans out the connective tissue. You need it. You have to have it. A child's most likely, more likely to get some kind of a, a skin connected disease or even a muscle disease from it. They don't have measles. But the pharmaceutical house wants you to be sick. As long as you're taking medication, they're making money. And the pharmaceutical companies run the, the medical profession. They write all the procedure manuals. So don't listen to anything they say about disease. Wait a minute. How many people would here, if you want to become millionaires, how many would people would go down? Somebody else has somebody flipped off. Click. How many people would go down to the guy flipping hamburgers at McDonald's to find out how to be a millionaire? Or would you go to Donald Trump? When you want to learn about health, why would you go to a doctor who only knows disease and drugs? It doesn't make any sense. It is the most asinine thing you can think of. It's the most illogical thing you can think of to go to a doctor about health. It's ridiculous. But that's the only choice they have if you're not around. No, it isn't. You just have to have faith in your body. Did you, you attended my uh, my uh, workshop, right? Yeah. I told you how the body works. You just have to trust it. <laughs> I know, but we panic and. Yeah, but you don't have to panic. You, you've got the PDF version of my book. You put in bleeding in there. And you would have come up with a green cabbage juice. Yeah. Right. It would have taken you ten minutes at the maximum. Nine, yeah. I would have saved nine thousand dollars for one day in hospital. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but see, you don't have to pay it since they caused you anaphylaxis. Well, that's not true. I called them and they said that uh, I signed. I didn't know what I was signing, and I signed off with saying that. Doesn't matter. They can't do that. I've done it several times to them. And they said yeah. they have to treat according to the standard treatment. And no, they no, they them. don't. No, when you tell them, it's like somebody goes in there and says, "I'm allergic to penicillin." And they give you penicillin, they are liable. They're just telling you that because they don't want to get, they want their money from Well, I talked to the QA guy. Uh, okay, uh, go, no, no, no. go to court, go to court. They won't go to court, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I've had at least 100 people do that. They will not go to court on it. They can't get a collection agency after you either because as soon as the collection agency contacts you, you write a letter and say the dispute. Once you give them, once you tell the um, the collection company that there is a legal dispute, doesn't have to get them to court at all. You've just got a legal dispute, and this is what Clinton did when he was in office. You've got that legal dispute, they can never call you again. The only recourse that the doctor has is to sue you personally. He doesn't have the time, dime, nor inclination. I've had over a hundred people discharge hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, but is it worth the effort for me to frustrate myself and get all crazy? To well, you don't, you don't have to get that. crazy. You write a letter. That's the end of it. You copy it when the collection agency calls, contacts you. You send them the letter, a copy of the letter. It's that easy. It's one letter that you write 
and you say your well, contention. It's your authority to pay him. Well, it's up to you. Yeah. Okay, do you have a question? Yeah. <laughs> uh, my daughter is 26. She has been tested for thyroid disease because she is constant tired. And she has, I don't want to say neck, okay, she looks like a tire around the neck. Uh-huh. And there are times that it's not there, and every time you just kind of swells up. They test the blood work that comes out here every time. There's a cat thyroid. She just is a poor digester of food. So she needs to be on a good diet. She's one of those people who just can't handle the normal, average diet and be somewhat normal. I was just wondering what part is, why would it sort of make them swell out? Well, your lymph glands, your major lymph gland network are here, here, all the way back into the sides, the breast area, especially in women, and all the way down the crotch area, it goes all the way down the inner thighs. That's where your lymph glands are responsible for cleaning and detoxifying and neutralizing, sending the poisons out of the body. Hers are getting jammed up here. She must have had a lot of canned foods or eat chocolate or something that's causing toxicity in the brain, in the throat, in the face. And she gets a lot of dental work, you know, injections, and she'll have that to deal with too. And these glands are responsible for that. If it were just the thyroid, the thyroid would be swelling. Either both the thyroid glands and the, and the parathyroids, or you have two on either side of each thyroid, each side of the thyroid, that would swell. But when the whole neck swells, that's the lymphatic system. And it's jammed. She needs to take those hot baths. Well, she takes, if she does a good diet and takes hot baths. Do you have a question? I want to ask you about lubrication formula. I'm on two meals a day for your instruction. And um, I'm cooking four eggs and some <coughs> butter and honey. You can it four times a day with the lube. Uh-huh. Is that okay to do? You mean extra eggs with your lube formula? Well, I do four and I put in the four containers and I turn it four times a day. That's excellent. Two of each meal yeah. and two in between. Uh, is that better than drinking milk? I, everybody knows how I feel. I don't want to keep getting fatter. I'm 150 pounds, uh-huh. almost. But you feel I'm great, right? right? Yeah. I two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but I feel wonderful on milk, and I feel wonderful on loose. Lorraine, uh-huh. don't laugh at me. <laughs> We're all laughing at you. I'm especially well, laughing you. Well, Your skin is I'm more colored. Yeah. I, I, don't want to get fat off you know, people I haven't seen in your teeth. Hey, uh, but you remember my name. Yeah, but I'm fat and happy. Fat and happy. Okay, well, I am fat and happy. But, so, do you think I should drink the milk in between, the loose? Because i got to drink something. And Absolutely, I don't, I don't yeah. Water. yeah. You might want to do the, uh, you know, the cucumber, you know, oh, stuff, too. Oh, the cucumber? Yeah. But I do drink the two drinks, you know, like this. Yeah, but I mean, you could make the sport drinks, you know. Um, Is that going to make me run to the bathroom? Not usually, but no. you, don't, you don't make a big batch like, that's for the hydration formula for my athletes. Yeah, I know, I heard you about know, that. So, uh, and it works very well, I mean. Usually, like you sold McEnroe in the old tapes, you know, he was downing like a whole gallon during, you know, uh, three hours of afternoons of matches, you know. I've got athletes that do just uh, less than a quart at the same time, you know, just sipping a little bit all the time in their camp. Yeah. 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 Well, with the athletes, what you need the cheese and cream. Okay, I don't know. I mean, on the diet, I feel, I feel wonderful. Right. Sometimes well, you would probably have less weight if you eat the cheese and cream more often for acid reflux. Is that right? Because the cheese of acid reflux is when the heavy metals and toxins are dumping 
through the esophagus all the way down into the stomach. So if you eat cheese, it will absorb those poisons, and if you sip the cream, it will coat it. So you won't need as much fat in your body, because you will handle it as it's dumping. Because that could reduce about 10 pounds of weight. Not gaining, uh, no, but that could reduce 10 pounds from where you are now. So, so do that with the meals or in between? No, whenever, in between when you start feeling the acid reflux, that's when to do it. So you say cheese and cream? Yeah. What, what about honey? Don't have honey with that mixture. You don't, when you have honey and cheese together, you digest the cheese. When you have raw cheese without honey directly with it, the cheese just acts as a magnet in the sponge. It will not digest. Cooked cheese is just the opposite because it's all fractionated already. Whether you have it with honey or not, it's going to digest. And all those cauterized minerals are going to be part of your body. But when it's raw cheese, unless there's honey directly in the cheese, like mixing it in your mouth together, it will not digest. The sport drink is a cucumber puree. You've mentioned sport drink. That's the cucumber puree. Well, it's, I have <coughs> cucumber juice and tomato juice and some other things in that recipe. What you do is just make the cucumber a puree instead of a juice. And that's in the book. And there's sport. Well, not the puree part. Okay. But you just make that change. Okay. Do you have a question? Well, that would be normal. Gas is not a bad sign. In fact, if you've ever had surgery, especially intestinal abdominal, and a doctor will come in and say, are you passing gas? And if you say yes, he's happy. Because that means your digestive juices and your digestive bacteria is working. If you say no, it scares them because that means your intestines aren't working. So it's normal. About smelly gas? Smelly gas is those heavy toxins mixing in. You want that stuff out first. <laughs> but the way you can reduce those odors Cucumber and cream will help reduce those odors. Tomato and cream will reduce those odors. Tomatoes by themselves will. In fact, if you ever get squirted by a skunk, you know the only way you can get rid of that odor? Tomatoes. tomatoes. Rub tomatoes on it. Nicholas got squirted by uh, my dog. Yeah. And I called the veterinarian clinic for emergency, uh -huh. and uh, they said tomato juice. Yeah. So it takes a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, 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 you rub them a couple of times with tomato and that would take it all <laughs> off. But you just did it one time. And for you, you'd have to eat tomatoes every day, you know, because you're <coughs> dumping those toxins in if you have gas. Another reason you could have gas is if you're eating nuts out of the nut formula. Yeah. Don't do that. What about hot dogs? Also, the nut Pardon? Nuts by themselves, seeds by themselves. If you make them, blend them in till they, till they become the flour, you add the egg, butter, and honey, you've got the nut formula. That does not produce gas. 99% of the time. What about hot during eating You should be eating the nuts unless you're in a formula. Yeah, yeah then you eat cheese to absorb those toxins. If you get nauseous at any time, those are poisons dumping into the stomach. The hydrochloric acid neutralizes those substances. Uh, let's say when you get a, let's say you got an insect bite. If you drink milk or eat a, a, a milk product, a dairy product, the body will automatically send it to the stomach even quicker. Now the hydrochloric acid will neutralize the poison, 
so you won't have a reaction. If a dairy product is there, it absorbs it. So there's no irritation as it goes through the intestinal tract, or you can vomit it. One of the yeah, other. Done too. <laughs> but anytime you get nauseous, those are poisons dumping into the stomach. Just eat a little sugar cube sized amount of cheese for as long as the nausea exists. Uh, so every 20 minutes, you know, if you, the nausea continues, you eat some more because that means you're still dumping. You're continuing to dump. Sometimes in some situations I've seen toxins dump into a stomach for a whole 36 hours yeah. before it stops. Most of the time it will be 45 minutes, 25 minutes, and then it stops. Well, I'm doing that. I'm still getting an office almost all the time, and I'm sitting here, and so my stomach's going to sit, going to office, but then I think, yeah, about, I, do, and I think about a cheese, but then I'm going acid, like I'm getting acid reflux from the cheese. I you won't have, get acid reflux. No, that. I'm starting to have problems. I'm getting acid back up after I take this, like, cheese. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. I'm not even having the eggs. Because it's cheese. drawing more poisons in. That's what some dairy does in some people. That's why you have to drink your cream to coat it. But if you drink, you sip it, so it just coats. So not much gets into your stomach. You just want to coat your esophagus. You, you made me take only like two or four ounces at a time, like a shot glass. Well, for her, it would be like a tablespoon at a time or two tablespoons. That would coat your esophagus. Well, in your stomach lining, you got pretty toxic stomach lining. So is your esophagus. It's going to take some time to relieve all that. And it doesn't dissolve itself. That's how resilient it is. So when people take in a toxic poison like, like a vaccine that contains mercury, aluminum, formaldehyde, ether, and uh, detergent, minimum, it goes into the stomach lining. But it will dump into your food every time you eat. And when you, if I say you have a lot in your stomach, and let me tell you, 99.9% .9 of everybody does. So eat just a sugar cube, cube size of cheese, 10 minutes before you eat or drink anything. It has to be the raw cheese, right? It has to be raw. You know, use pasteurized cheese, it will digest, you'll just reabsorb all those toxins. Why is colon cancer? You know, we're talking about the stomach, but colon cancer is the big around here, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's so pretty why, prevalent. If it's happening up here, why is it happening down there too? I don't get to, you know, you got poisons down here which are damaging the intestines. You know, but the stomach has the worst, gets the worst. Well, our digestive tract is what, 27 feet long or something? It's 12 times the length of our torso, and our torso is about 3 feet, depending upon the person. So you measure your torso 12 times that as long as yours is. And so how do, in your system, how do you delineate the top to the bottom? You're saying that the stomach is one it's, of the most... Well, it's the tissue, the type of cell. Yeah. It can withstand hydrochloric acid because it makes hydrochloric acid. But they have all these drugs that want to mm. kill the hydrochloric acid. Absolutely. And that doesn't make Anti-acids. But that still doesn't affect the stomach directly. That just absorbs the acid so you don't digest your proteins and some of your other foods. Okay. I'm still after, you know, because of di diverticulitis, you know. Not all the toxins go to the stomach. I say the worst. Oh. So you've got all these other ones going to other parts of the intestines. But anybody I know that gets a colonoscopy ends up with diverticuli. They want a diagnosis. So everybody's got holes in their colon. That's not a hole. That's a sac. It's a cyst. Open cyst. Does your side get rid of it? Yeah. Cures it. It goes away. It heals over. It will come back every now and then. Yeah, it will come. It will, just like a hemorrhoid will come back every once in a while. Oh. If there's something toxic in that area discarding into that uh, particular part of the intestine, the intestine will, you know, a diverticuli is just like a saculation within the 
folds of the intestines. And it's like a cyst. It acts like a cyst. It will hold toxic fluid until enough nutrients are in there and neutralizing it. Of course, you're on a bad diet. You know, you're always putting toxic food in it. So you're adding to that toxicity and they can swell and burst and cause all kinds of problems just like an appendix or just like any kind of a cyst. So when you're on a good diet, the good food gets in there and the body utilizes it locally to neutralize the fluids, the toxins that are in that diverticuli, which is basically an open cyst. Yeah, it's true. Um, she said, uh, is it true that some people with diverticulitis or a lot of people with diverticulitis, they'll tell you not to eat seeds because it will block the, the they'll block, it'll block the cyst. Oh, okay. So none of that fluid can pass in or out, so it goes stale and rots in there. Decays. It's true. It happens only with elderly, very elderly people in their 70s. If you have diverticulitis, when you go on the diet, stay away from seeds. Even tomato seeds in some people. I only have one man that reacts to tomato seeds with his diverticulitis. But it does happen. No. Uh -huh. A lot of times when I'm studying because I was an idiot for names, I didn't bother with names. So I usually don't know the names of all the people I've studied their work. That means you don't have to remember my name either. <laughs> <laughs> Payback's a bitch. <laughs> yes. There was a lot of questions about um, nausea. When I first started the diet, I remember I was really nauseous, and someone at one of the potlucks gave me a teaspoon of honey. Yeah. And it went right away. Yeah. Why would that work? And, and why is, how is that different than using the uh, cream cheese? Well, yours was a lack of digestive juices. Um. You know, your nausea was the hydrochloric acid wasn't forming properly. So you, know, you didn't have up. high acidity. You had a nausea without the acidity. Yeah, so it's a different thing. Hear me sucking? I never got to suck on the nipple. <laughs> My mother dried up when I was born. She took one look at me and said, what an ugly baby. I'm not feeding that thing. Yes. Ten minutes before everything you eat or drink. Yeah. Juice, yeah, absolutely. You don't have to have it if you're just sucking eggs by themselves, unless you get nauseous. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's about uh, eating meat or beef. 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 Okay. Uh, so. I like to eat this rice and eat the fennel cake. No. No. So, what's a good substitute for that? So I know all Asians have that habit. So, you know, it's, okay. it's so inbred in your whole culture. I just, uh, I just heard about a mushroom. Um, it's called the magic noodle. Uh -huh. And it. it uh, mimics angel hair pasta. It's supposed to be incredibly delicious. It doesn't make any difference. You have to process it. No, yeah. you don't. Oh, it's yeah. actually just the plain. You just grate it? it? Yeah. Oh, well, oh, I don't even grate it. Yeah. I think it comes in like little strings or something like uh -huh. that. Well, that would like be fine. Angel. Look oh, online. Oh. Magic must mag. Not a magic mushroom. Well, Those are magic, really yeah, right. They <laughs> feed the brain. <laughs> 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 magic <laughs> pasta. <laughs> Magic noodle. Magic noodle. Thank you. Dot <laughs> 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 If the if the if what she says is true that you don't have to cook that 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 uh, 
mushroom and it comes stringy like that, and that tastes like pasta, hey, that's great because mushrooms help protein digestion. Well, just think about this. If somebody you handle would have gloves on with uh, ammonia on it or Clorox, chlorine, and you fried that into your meat, is that a good thing? Okay. I'd much rather have bacteria, but let me tell you, in those stores, they cannot handle meat with their hands anymore. They have to wear gloves. And they've got chlorine and Clorox and, and formaldehyde, and they have all these detergents that are antibacterial, and that's what's getting on your meat. I always scrape my meat. I scrape the top off. I take a flat knife, no serrated blade, and I'll just scrape, and it'll, you know, I, get, you know, I just get the top of it off. All that fluid and all that toxicity. Right. Now, you know, there. I was into eating raw meat before anybody talked about all grazed beef or anything like that. So it was 1976 when I started eating raw meat. And when I went back to Los Angeles, no health food store carried meat. It was unheard of. If you were in a health food store, you were a vegetarian. And that's about the way it was. If you were into health, you were a vegetarian. So here I was a freak eating all this meat. But I bought right out of Ralph's and Bonds and Piggly Wiggly and stuff like that. Because that's the only thing I could get. So, uh, and when I was lived in Paris for three years, from 93 to 96, three months a year, I ate out of Care 4 supermarket. And on my last trip home, when my girlfriend broke up with me because I wouldn't marry her, she said, you know, I was on the plane, I'm looking in the magazine, and they're talking about Care 4 supermarket had been supplied with the mad cow meat all those years that I was eating it there. <laughs> and here it is, you know, they say it takes 10 to 12 years. So it's been 96, so it's been already 13 years since I stopped eating and I have no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're not eating the brain, you're not eating the nervous system, you're not eating the glands where most of those toxicities okay. stay. Okay. You're just eating meat, the beef of muscle meat. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so, I mean, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be the healthiest meat to eat, okay. but you're still gonna get a lot of nutrients from it. Better, better than starving and cook. Yeah. Uh, the last thing is that, uh, if you talk you know, I can't do that. You you already asked oh, okay. one question, so I got to move on. Uh, beef, beef do you have a question? Beef question. And no question. Okay. Do you have a question? I do. Um. So I'm kind of new to this, and yeah, I haven't seen you here before. What is yeah, your name? I'm Nicole. Nicole, hi, Nicole. Yeah. And um, I like I've had you know or I've learned from people before and it's always been big on the water thing and I've been listening to everybody's things and like replacements and everything but I guess I'm kind of not really clear on um, you know I'm totally open to not needing water and everything like that but I'm kind of wanting a little clarity on like what exactly is a few I, I guess the uh, it dilutes the stomach acid is it dilutes everything it's just solvent it's the world's first and main solvent. You look at an archaeological book, um, agricultural book, you look under the first property, that is a solvent. And that's water. When it rains, it dissolves rock. Plants can eat. When we use water in our systems, it causes fractionation 
when you have a, a group of nutrients travel together, it's all by ionization. It's all by attraction. And there's, like you may have, let's say, 12 calcium molecules, and you'll have two uh, sodium molecules, and maybe five magnesium molecules. And it's a whole assortment. You have 93 to 117 nutrients all bundled together in a smorgasbord. So when a cell opens to eat, and it's got one to two ions inside it, it attracts that. And it eats and it gets a full banquet, a completely balanced meal. When you use water or salt, it fractionates everything. So when a cell eats, it's getting a little of something, and it's always getting deficiency. What is the water is ionized and alkaline? Same thing. Water is a solvent. It fractionates. It tears things apart. That's what it does. So I think the studies of the hundreds of people and water and fluid and so forth are saying the reason they live so long is because they find out the condition of all these areas. That's all their theory. It's got nothing to do with reality. Lourdes, the real way it used to work before they purified and filtered the water, everybody shit and pissed in it. And that's what made people well. They never cleaned that water and one filthy person got in after another and all that bacteria went in there and corrected the problems quickly. Hmm. Now that and you never hear anything about going on any of the experiences of Lourdes anymore because now they have the full water flowing through and nobody's in any shit or piss. You know? So all the water's clean so nobody's getting the miracle cures they used to. <laughs> and the Huns, they don't drink much water. Yeah, they do raw milk. They drink, their diet is 82% dairy, period. They hardly drink any water. Just remember, when water came into being was in 1961. Before that, when we'd all go to school, we'd go to the fountain, we'd get three sips a day, three tablespoons of water a day. Other than that, we just drank milk. And then soda came in, and it was soda and milk. Then it was no milk at all soda. You know, now it's all chemical. It's just chemical water. It's even worse. So what happened? They started bottling water in 1961. They paid doctors to tell everybody they needed to drink eight glasses of water a day to make their margins grow every year. More people would start drinking water. To contaminate the water, what do you drink? Bottled water. So it was all about. The whole plan and theory was set out. And that was the Rockefeller family, too, doing that. And then the bottles have pollutants in them, which you then absorb. Correct. If they're plastic. Yeah, yeah. So the water thing, you said in the book, Gerstina. Gerald said. But now they have they it have in plastic, plastic so I don't look at it. Yeah. So what do you, what do we do now? We well, you water. got Perrier, you got uh, Ramlusa, you uh, San Pellegrino, it? San Faustino, okay. uh, Apollinaris. You won't go near Gerstina. Gerald Steiner. Well, in other countries, it's still in glass. In this country, it's in glass. But I don't drink water anymore, really. I've had, uh, what is it, three, three tablespoons of water in three weeks. And medicinally, that's my medicine. So what is it about, like, vegetables and everything like that? You know, obviously, water or food and everything like that, like, when it's growing, like, how does that process it change? That's the for the plants. Well, they yeah, yeah, they yeah, use water. They, without breaking down the soil, the rock. They couldn't eat. Okay, so what about it that um, what they're getting, like say if I'm drinking a cucumber or tomato, like what about it, like their liquid? Their liquid is always is all this smorgasbord of nutrients. Okay, okay, that's what I'm Yeah. Because you're not drinking water, you're drinking all of these nutrients coupled with the water. Okay. And you may only have maybe 10 molecules of, of water combined in all of those 93 to 117 nutrients. How does that create an antioxidant? How does that create an antioxidant? 
Well, that's it's, you know, it's part of it's just process. How does it do it? It just does it by synthesis, you know, photosynthesis. You know, the antioxidants are vitamin D, vitamin A. Most of your oil and water soluble fat, uh, water soluble fats. A lot of people don't understand fats can be water soluble, and coconut cream is the highest in water soluble fats. That's why it's so cleansing. Also, why it's so hydrating to the skin. And that's my soap. Coconut cream. Do you have a question? Yeah, well, if you uh, had any um, theories of why, why the, was the flu so uh, virulent this year? I mean, what? It's going to get stronger every year. If you read my books, I talk about b uh, bacteria, parasites, and fungus. They are the normal janitors of the body. Everybody used to eat colds. Colds were mainly bacterial. When a t tissue gets so toxic, it will destroy, it will kill any parasite, any bacteria that eats those toxic cells because they're poisoned with mercury, thallium, lead, um, and any of the other PCBs and all the other 60,000 toxins that we have now in the last 50 years, new ones, new toxins. So they kill the cells. The only way the cell can, the body can clean itself after that is the virus. Virus are not alive. So when you hear a live virus, it's an absolute misnomer. It's a stupid person talking because they have no uh, virus, have no nucleus. They have no respiratory or digestive tract. They are a protein structure just like a cleanser that cleanses the grease off of, a, off of your driveway. Do you say Tide soap is contagious? Does most laundry rooms have it, or a laundry soap is contagious? Does every home has one? No. Your cells make viruses to clean themselves, a little bitty structure at a time. But the pharmaceutical house will say, oh, look, it is dissolving the cell. Yeah, it's dis dissolving a finite part of, part of the cell only. It's not dissolving the whole structure. It doesn't damage the whole um, integrity of the cell, just a little part of it. It's like when you have bronchitis. Your bronchioles are cleaning. Certain tissue in your bronchioles are cleaning. And it's specific for that particular cleansing. The more chemicals we get, the more antibiotics we get, the more antifungus everything, the more chemicals in the fibers you're using, uh, you know, synthetic clothing. You breathe in those synthetic fibers, and what are you getting? The plastic. You're getting the PCBs. You're getting the um, the, poly uh, the polymers that harden, that are also a plastic. You're getting all of that toxicity liquefied into your lungs and the rest of your system. You can't get a, a cold anymore. And each virus is going to get worse and worse and worse. And that's where we're heading. For me, it's the opposite. I used to keep, uh, you know, colds and flus, viral or bacterial, for three to five months. Now I get them for an hour, two hours, and that's it. I pray for long ones, but I don't get long ones anymore. I want to get well fast, you know. Yes? I missed my question before. Can yeah. Um, eggs. If you buy eggs at the store, better to get, because typically you can't get fertile organic eggs, but it's better, otherwise you can get organic eggs, it's still better to buy fertile eggs. You don't want organic eggs. Organic is a, is a indication that they're using organic soybeans, and it's a misnomer. It's a lie. It's a fraud because you cannot feed raw soybeans to chickens, any kind of bird. It will kill them just like it will kill a human. 
so they have to be chemically and heat treated, which means they're no longer organic. You know, I called several, you know, um, uh, chicken farmers, and I said, hey, you know, you're feeding them soy, you know, like 85% soy, 75 to 80% soy. In soy, you have to treat chemically, treat, you can't call that organic. Well, the FDA lets us. They don't give a shit about you and your health. So it's better to get non-organic. If you know it's organic, if it says organic on there, you can better believe it's made with mostly soy. Or vegetarian. Soy. Yeah, yeah, you don't want just vegetarian. <coughs> vegetarian is mainly soy. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Right. Well, most of the time with the, the fertile eggs, it says from vegetarian. Yeah. 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 So the ones we get from James is what? Those are, those are not fed any soy. Okay, so with chicken too. But their chicken is shit. They dip it in salt. I had the chicken uh, yesterday, and I had high blood pressure, and uh, uh, it was nauseous almost all day. Why did they do that? Like it's chicken, it's Anti chicken and the antibacterial. And if anybody's kosher in there, kosher yeah. that's the way they, they do salting on everything. Yeah. Yeah. So with chicken in the store, if it says organic, boneless chicken breast, or just free range chicken breast, always free range. Take the free range. Yeah. Okay. okay, so a whole food. You don't want to buy the organic one. Yeah. Okay. Pardon? They're feeding it a processed substance to get the omega-3. Unless they're just saying that the soy that they are fed has omega-3 in it. And soy has omega-3 in it. But once they put that, uh, it's a um, kerosene byproduct that they say is, um, is food grade. How the hell can you have kerosene that's food grade? Give me a break. <laughs> it's crazy, insane. Yeah, shoot out of the ground. Would you drink kerosene? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's why you're here. At the airport, we make alcohol on it. My dose of algae. Uh, Pardon? Uh, yes. I, I wash my hair with eggs in my scalp and my hair. Uh -huh. My hair has been really dry the last three months, yeah. and it looks so bad. I'm embarrassed. And then I put coconut oil, but when I'm at work, it's coconut it's cream. It's sand. Why is that happening? Is that detoxing? Well, yeah. The egg is so uh, able to pull out all the oils and dirt, it doesn't leave a conditioner on uh, to a lot of people. So I use coconut cream now, and you see my hair is so very don't do eggs? oily. Wash it with well, it cream? depends. If you need to wash it really thoroughly, see, my scalp doesn't get so you know toxic anymore. But before, I used egg and then put coconut cream on to, uh, to uh, condition it. So always wash with eggs, but if I need a conditioner, it's it coconut it. cream, not coconut oil. Okay, so how do you do it? You put it in there and then wait five minutes and rinse it out. The coconut cream? Yeah. No, Never what you do is just put it very thinly in your hands and brush it in your hair and then comb it through. Oh, so once you get out of the yeah. yeah. you rinse all the egg out. Absolutely. Okay. I always use a coconut oil. It's all oil soluble, so it's going to make your hair get dirtier quicker and it's not going to get the water soluble in to protect your scalp. You know, it's my hair is getting thicker and thicker since I started using the coconut so cream. So eggs and only coconut cream when you need it, when you detox it too Well, I use it all the time. I only uh, use that now. I don't use scalp and yet. all the way down your yeah, hair? Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It's pretty shiny and nice. Yeah. <laughs> were talking about the, you can buy H seed, which is hung for a couple of weeks, uh -huh. good or no? Well, you know, on the outer layers, of course, you're not going to have any enzymes, active enzymes in it. So on the inner cuts, it'll be fine. You're going to have bacteria growing. I don't know. 
when the, you hang the meat, yeah. okay, it dries on the outside. If you eat the outside, there's not going to be any enzymes in that outer layer for about a half an inch in. How would I know that? Would it be a different color? Oh, it'll be it'll be very dry looking. If you get a cut, that's dry looking. I got thirty pounds of cut coming, but I don't know. It's too hungry, so. Yeah, that means We're all that surface is dry. But I'm going to grind it anyway. I'm going to put it through my grinder. Well, it's just you have to understand that probably about 5% of that meat is going to not have bio the enzymes in it. So you could add a little honey. Okay. And that will add the enzymes back. Now, I want to store it, so I'm going to put it in my jar as a little tight lid because yep. I don't want it to go high. Right. Now, is it going to go high faster once it's pumped to bake? No. No. Mm -hmm. Has there anybody had a que this one didn't ha that didn't give a question that wants to now? Joe. Um, Always lime juice is the only natural thorough antiseptic. <laughs> Pardon? Oh no, you're talking about anesthetic. I thought you say antiseptic. And there's no anesthetic that's safe. All of them will harden your tissue. There's no anesthetic. You just have to do it without any anesthetic. <laughs> you have to understand that, that their drilling is a very brief period of time. And if you have a dentist that has a, a water jet, that means it's cooling that, the bit. The bit, when it gets hot, that's what causes all the pain. If it burns the nerve. That burn stays in that nerve. If there's, if that's a water jet on there, it's not, you're not going. The pain's not going to be last last more than a few seconds, and that's it. Oh yes, I've had seven crowns put on and not a drop of of uh, antiseptic. Plus, I had them pull a molar with no antiseptic. And the doctor says, I've never done this before. And I said, you know, because it's shaped like this. The tool is shaped like this. And it has blades here oh. and blades here. So what they do is they shove it down into the gum, and then they turn it quickly around so it just cuts all the, the um, skin that's connected to the tooth away, the gum away. <laughs> and then they pull because it's kind of... It's kind of cone shaped at the same time, <laughs> so they pull it out. And I said, I want you to do three motions, and you 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 pause at each one, and each one will be probably three four seconds maximum. Uh, you put it in, you turn it, and then you pull. Those are the three motions. So you give me a time to adjust to each pain, and he did it all in one motion. <laughs> he didn't go <laughs> he just did like that and he pulled pressure. it out and I mean the pain was over in 30 seconds was that Mexico? over in 30 seconds if you have Novocaine or Xylocaine or any of those shot into your mouth you're going to detoxify for two years how about gas the gas they give you the well, gas you know it's going to do some brain damage but uh, it's better than being injected. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember, we only use 10% of the brain, so you got 90% of it to destroy. <laughs> I had it impacted. That's why he's removing it. You have seen it. Oh, it was all the way up. The nerve was impacted all the way up to here. The nerve, the whole thing was a mess. When he pulled it out, the blood shot out, but I stopped bleeding in 10 seconds. He thought I was going to be a bleeder because the blood just came out, and the whole nerve that was still attached to the tooth because it broke way up here. So all this nerve was attached to the tooth. It was all white and swollen and full of pus. Dr. Dr. Uh, 
far as uses acupuncture and that little uh, ear clip thing, yeah. if you don't want... Uh, no, you can, yeah. Or chewing that helps. raw marijuana. Yeah. That he won't let you do one. <laughs> well, yeah, you can do it at home when you get there. Right, right. They can't marijuana. stop you. I did. It was hard getting down to Mexico <laughs> when it started coming on. <laughs> 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 but it did work. Yeah, it worked. And I did Definitely the pain worked. formula. Yep, yep. <laughs> also, magic mushrooms are great. You just Good take, stuff. you know, about a, you know, a BB-sized amount and just let it dissolve in your mouth. And let me tell you, it takes away 60% of the pain. Where do you get magic mushrooms? I don't know. I've been looking... <laughs> Wild mushrooms. I haven't been able to find them in a long time. Yeah, Cal Patrick's in Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Cal Patrick's in Oregon. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, so, it's like they, you know, with all these chemtrails and everything, they're poisoning uh, all the yeah. the fields, so the mushrooms aren't growing like they used to. The, the magic ones. Okay. Anybody else who? didn't give a question and wants to now? Nobody. What time is it? 4.30. 4.30. We have a half an hour, so we'll just go around. Anybody with a question? Osteoporosis issues. Because I had a lot of them. The majority of the osteoporosis for me, somebody's going quick, by the way. Uh, the big one. The big black? The big black one? Anybody? Anybody? Okay. The osteoporosis issues. you want me to wait for you to quick one? Well, we won't really have time. Well, it's there. okay. Um, most of the time, wherever they gave me steroid, I had the greatest severity of osteoporosis. Okay. You'd put me on milk for a very long period of time. I mean, a lot of milk. I think I drank like three gallons of milk a week. Sometimes up to five gallons a week. And for a crow and I patient, drink seven to eight gallons a week uh, in, in the summer. The crow <laughs> patients is yes. kind of tough because I had a hard time digesting it. And I just cut back after the fire just because I was talking so heavily I couldn't handle it for a while. Um, yeah. But I, uh, you know, uh, you can use cheese and honey together as a good mineral supplement and will help reverse osteoporosis. I've been using that for the past three years and it's working well enough that I can say that, yeah, you can start using that to what? reverse osteoporosis. Cheese and, what? Cheese and honey. Yeah, they have to be chewed together at the same time. They have to. You can mash it in a cheesecake. Cheesecake is the same thing. The honey's already mixed in the cheese. Um, but you use just a small amount of honey to the cheese. If you're using a tablespoon of cheese, use a quarter of a teaspoon of honey only. Very small amount of honey. Because you have honey in the green juice to preserve it. And do you eat cheese to help? The honey the is already involved in the fats and the juice. It has to be the cheese and the honey together. Immediately. The honey can have already been exposed to some other food. How many times a day? I usually do it, and I advise people to do it with uh, osteoporosis, 30 minutes after the meat meal. Some of your size, two, three tablespoons with a teaspoon of honey, or three quarters of a teaspoon of honey. Well, you can put a little honey on the on the piece of cheese and eat it that way, or put the cheese in your mouth and then put the honey in your mouth. Do it off your, your finger if you want, if you're feral like I am. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Pardon? Um, I would say, you know, it's by body weight. Um, for every uh, 100 pound weight, it's one tablespoon of cheese to one quarter teaspoon of honey. Say that again. For every 100 pound body weight, okay. one tablespoon of cheese okay. to one quarter teaspoon of honey. And that's been all reversing osteoporosis quicker than even milk did. That's per day? 
Yeah, I'd do it every day. For me, you had actually taken me off the cheese and honey. I can't remember why. Yeah. You put me on the milk, and I was having other challenges. Well, I didn't want you to digest the cheese at all. I wanted you to use the cheese to bind with all the poisons that were making you so sick. Oh, yeah. Talk about <laughs> nauseous. I was having at least one good nauseous diarrhea vomiting a week, and I was really keeping my gut down. So... I was looking at Vicky because she wanted information. <laughs> My question, stainless steel, is it safe to drink out of versus plastic? Well, it's not going to put any metals in you, but it's certainly going to disturb the electromagnetic field because that will attract radio waves, radi radiation waves, everything. Oh, come on. <laughs> so by drinking it, I'm, I'm So get some milk. Get glass. Well, it did break. They won't let you know. But is, so this is dangerous to be drinking food out? Well, it's, it's, no, it's, it's just it's going to disturb the electromagnetic field. Uh -huh. So it's going to disturb some ionic bond. In the food? In the food, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So it won't be optimal, but it won't, it's not going to kill you. It's just going like to reduce plastic. your... your Food value. Don't they have the worse. glass container oh, on the inside? Like plastic is worse, of course. Yeah. They used to come yeah. with uh, they used to come with uh, the old ones did wow. with a glass well, container yeah. on the inside. The, yeah, yeah, that was those were fine. Yeah. But that doesn't have one. Those were in our lunch boxes in the city. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <you know? laughs> okay, so they have a shake at lunch, and you said plastic was better because the thing still if it ever got warm. Well, that was for the kids. You know, but that, that again. Because I'm using a real hard plastic thermostat. You're using the Lexan. Yeah, the Nalgene. I don't know, it's whatever. Yeah, the Nalgene. That's fine. It's not going to gas unless you subject it to direct heat or freezing. Or sunlight. Pardon? Correct. Yes. Only if you subject it to heat or freezing cold. If you freeze anything in it, it's going to cause a discharge. It's going to outgas. If you heat it, it's going to outgas. Isn't that with all the That's the only one. That, the other ones will outgas it all the time. I don't buy his stuff in plastic. I get his stuff in glass. I pay the extra money. So this is now Gene too. This plastic okay. Yeah, that's okay as long as you don't put it directly in the sun and you don't put it in a <laughs> oven and you don't put it in a microwave and you don't put it in the freezer. Okay. Yes, you open hot water in any kind of a plastic. All our medical devices are going to polycarbonate. Any styrene. Yes. I mean, because they all do they all gas. Yep. Yeah. The polycarbonate. You know, most stainless is that You get free 16 now on this one. It's so inert. But you say electromagnetic. It's electromagnetic fields that attracts radiation, radio waves, all kinds of things. That's true. I can see where that sets up an LC coil. Yep. Okay. I have a question. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> You're going to get rid of it. Real world. If we have to go out and eat cooked yeah. food, chicken. what would you recommend? Salad, meat, chicken, fish. If we have to be in the real world, you sell things, right? You're at, you're at well, I'd stay away from any cooked vegetables. Those are the worst things you could eat. Okay, no well, problem. that's the second worst thing you eat. Worst thing you could eat is French fries yeah. and chips. Oh, French fries and chips. Those are the worst things you can eat. Cereals are the next worst thing you could eat. Donuts are equal to the cereals. Stay away from all those. If you're going to have something cooked, Rice and take your butter with you. Um, you could have, uh, let's say, a broiled chicken, a broiled fish, lightly broiled, or lightly sautéed in water, not oil or fat. How about salad? Salads? 
Yeah, you know, I'm. You know, they're putting so much MSG on salads now. That's a pretty dangerous thing to eat. And rice, because it's white or brown, or no different. You don't want to polished rice. You want a nice, healthy rice. Brown rice. And it doesn't have It doesn't have a hull on it, but it's not. You know, like Uncle Ben. White rice Bleak. is like eating white bread. Yeah, it's like, no, it isn't. Because bread, you're putting a yeast, you're putting water, you're putting salt, you're putting other things in it. Rice is just, well, it may have a little salt in it if they're cooking it in salt. But, uh, I'm allergic to salt, but yeah. I just like to know white or brown. I've always cooked brown before I went on your diet. I was a vegetarian. That's up to you. Well, as long as it's whole. As long as it's a whole grain, it's fine. The whole grain, brown yeah. rice, okay. When's the last time you ate cooked food? Do you ever just... Don't when I'm in Asia, I get so hungry because of the hydrochloric acid in my small, small intestine. I don't have all the cream that I like. I'll eat a third of a cup of rice once a week with a third of a cup of butter. When you say, eat the rice with butter? Yeah. And I don't eat it with anything else that's that's that meal, you know, and I won't eat anything for three hours before and three hours after. Well, and that absorbs, for a good week, that'll keep collecting some of the high excess hydrochloric acid that makes me so hungry. So I don't... Well, you can read the book about that. Okay. Yeah, I talk about butter a lot in the book, okay. the importance of butter. So these sprouted corn tortillas, when I'm out of food or I'm so starving I'm getting a headache, I'll get broiled chicken and I'll I get these sprouted corn tortillas and I just put them over, warm them a little and roll the chicken in it, put butter at the bottom of it and eat like a butter chicken sandwich. It would be better if you don't use sprouted ones. The sprouted ones have turned into vegetation, vegetable oils. Vegetable oils crystal in the human body, crystallize in the human body. Just the, the regular whole ones. whole grain, not sprouted grain. That's right. That's oh, veg wow. that's a vegetable oil. I thought it was Flour are you eating it or juicing it or what are you doing with it? If you're making bread out of it, if you're making bread out of it and cooking it, that's not a good thing. Is this flour tortillas? Whole, whole grain flour tortillas. Whole grain. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's corn, the whole grain. That's in Mexico. That's all you find. Corn. Yeah. yeah. Flour. Well, flour is corn. You can have corn yeah. flour. Corn flour. Okay. Corn, yeah. corn, corn, corn. Just whole grain, no sprouted. Wow. Yep. Well, do the best you can. What else on the cook? That's right. And um, rice. Nothing. You have avocado, you have tomato, you have onion, you have cucumber, you have zucchini. I can't eat any of it. You will later on. I couldn't eat avocado when I began five years ago, but now I can. So, like a, a vinegar salad with that, just the apple cider vinegar. Yeah, if you take your own yeah. vinegar with you. Oh, yeah. So, in your book. Talk about this anyway. Could this be a supplement that you put out for us? It's in the detail. It'll be in the detox book. When's it coming out? In several hundred years. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're I think we're producing it every time we talk. Well, <laughs> the What's the DVD? Yeah. Uh, well, I was going to add do spend a lot of five hours a day. I committed while I was traveling. Uh -huh. And my 500 gigabyte hard drive crashed when it went to the TSA machine. Oh, uh, killed it. So killed oh all God. that, so I didn't get a chance to edit I it. I remember it. I couldn't get a hold of it too well. <laughs> right. Why don't you carry an external drive with you? Oh. I do. I have four. I take four with me. Yeah. But the 
that gee, that's 35, 38 hours, 39 and a half hours of, of you know, we shot him with five cameras, five and a half hours. So it takes, it was an enormous amount. So I'd say out of 500 gigabyte of hard drive. Well, it's this big. My yeah. 500 gigabytes is this big. And then I have two, two, 200 ones of the little small pocket ones. And then I have the hard drive in the, in the uh, computer, which is 160 gigabytes. So I've got a lot of space, but with that DVD stuff, it was so big, it could only fit on the 500 gigabytes. So I didn't have it backed up on any of the small ones. So what happened was it went through the scanner, the TSA scanner, and they say, oh, it doesn't harm computers. They ran it through twice because they didn't know what it was. And that killed it. Uh, yep. Well, there was a, I bought a computer once, a laptop, and right in the manual it said, airport security scanning devices will damage this computer. I took it right to the head of the TSA there in the, in the LAX airport international when I was taking off. He said, that's not true. I said, you're saying... This, these people are protecting themselves. This is a big company, one of the major companies, top of the line, better than IBM and Elm. Are you going to tell me they're not telling the truth? They're not protecting their butts? Oh, it's not what we're told. That's not true. They're just idiots. They're sheep. So, so anyway, it went. My, all of the information on that hard drive was gone. The hard drive was okay, but all the information was... And then I paid a hundred and some dollars for a program to uh, to uh, capture it and save it. Captured and saved everything, but he couldn't even use it. I don't know. And the company said, I don't know why we couldn't. You can't use it either. So that was that. I spent forty hours trying to uh, trying to recover that information. And a couple of hundred dollars couldn't save it, couldn't recover. Oh, yeah, I have it on a two terabyte at home. Can I interject here while we have a pause? Um, we have the co-op this Thursday, and normally I would need everybody to get their orders in last Tuesday, but if you want, I can get an order in and find a piece of paper right now. Make sure you get an email and post them on it. Okay, I think it's five, isn't it? It takes 40 years to clean every cell out of your body five times. 
Okay. Okay, to get the body to optimum. Okay. okay so it takes, uh, you know, seven years to reproduce every cell in your body. For them to stop giving off their toxins to their offspring, it takes five generations. Okay, so they're, they're, they were, like, the reason I was craving it is because they pretty much want to stay alive like anything else. Right, and yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And those cells grew up on it and lived on it, and that's what they were created from. They and they get in different chemistry, and they're not going to survive. Okay. Right. Well, let them die. <laughs> and that's true maybe after a year, why then you don't crave it yeah. as much? Well, it depends. It took me four that. years, but I wasn't on a balanced diet when I went on to a raw diet. It took me four years to stop craving. If anyone wants to buy the book, bring them uh, from the book. Yes. Does anybody want to get one of the books off of the book? Because they want to live there was one fellow over here. Where did he go? Oh, it's you. Yes. Okay. We want to live. Okay. All right. Okay, folks. That Thank does it. See you in a few Okay. Nice to see you. Nice Well, you just get to go through 40 more years, or. 35 more years? Oh, just fine. 35 more years, that's it. Hey, that's, that's <laughs> five years closer than that was five years that's ago. That's exactly <laughs> it. You, you know, I've got, still got, was it 12 years to go? And look at me, I'm already excited. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> and I start my 62nd year in a month. <laughs> Hey, your birthday's in April. April 17th, yep. Are you going to give me stuff now? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to sell some books. Oh, yeah.